A recent video of mine that I had a lot of fun creating was the one where I selected a bunch of forwards to play in a backline. While I do need to make a part two at some stage to discuss Tiblo Flamon and Seku Makalu, what if we tried to put a bunch of backs into the forwards? Imagine a world where Jonah Lomu kept playing number eight. Imagine a world where that skinny halfback tried to have a go at prop. And imagine a world where a fullback tried to jump in a line out. Well guys, let's have a laugh, let's give it a go, and let's pick a forward pack full of backs. Time to roll that channel intro. At loose head prop, I'm going to select Caleb Clark. Clark is an absolute talent with ball in hand who will bowl basically anybody over when they try to tackle him. His defensive mindset though is not exactly the best for the open space and he's not exactly the best under the high ball or with boot either. But with that raw power he could easily be trained to hit the rucks very frequently and he's also got a decently low centre of gravity that could definitely see him hold tight in the scrum. With all that bulk on him it's got to be used for something so why not make him into a prop if worse comes to worse and injuries come along. For hooker, I'm going to select Andre Pollard. He already plays as a key decision maker for the team over in the South African team, the Springboks. Pollard is very strong though for a first five. He's over 100 kgs, he was covered 12 a few times when the likes of Lucanio Arm and Damian Dialendi have been injured for the Springboks. He notably did it when Jesse Creel had a concussion against the All Blacks in 2022. Pollard is an amazing defender as well, just absolutely amazing, so you know what, why not get him in there? You've got to have a very good, good mindset to be a hooker, and with a passing game like Pollard's, I reckon he could probably do the line-out throwing as well. For my tight head prop, I'm going to go for Jonathan Dante. He's probably the third to smartest 12 in world rugby right now after David Havili and Owen Farrell with an excellent passing game. He's just absolutely brilliant on that front with his brain. The thing is though about Dante, he also has the added bonus of being 110 kgs and a very good jackal threat. The low centre of gravity he has as well would allow him to be a very effective scrummager. Seriously, look at the dude, he's massive, why not give him a go at prop? There's already a fair few other wingers and a few other centres who can cover the uh, loose forwards, so you know what, maybe prop would be best for Jonathan Dante if you have an injury crisis and you need to get Get one of the backs into the forwards. For my first lock I'm going to go for Mason Grady of Wales. Grady can kick, he can pass and he's a newbie. The thing is though being 20 years old this Welshman can be moulded very much still. His rugby instincts are still developing at a professional level, he hasn't played too many tests and you know with the amount of potential this guy has he could definitely turn into the locks. He's absolutely tall enough to jump in the line out so long as there's a third lock at six to balance the line out and with the bulk he has, he could just run you over with ball in hand in the tight spaces to get you to go forward. Mason Grady, ideally, he would be paired with Geordie Barrett. Geordie Barrett can play pretty much every position. He's worn every jersey in the back line for the All Blacks, aside from the 13 jersey and the 9 jersey, and I don't think he wants to try the 9 jersey anytime soon. His um, height has often been a huge feature for the All Blacks catching the high ball at the back of the field while playing fullback. While well, we also have the stunner from 2017 where he could leap in the air to set up Lyle Marpy against the Lions to um, get that series' third test underway. The added bonus to that height though, of course, it's the line out. He's um, even gone to the Melbourne Storm for a little bit to work on his game, so you know what, give him a go in the line out. Now we do need to discuss today's video sponsor Rugby News Magazine who send me a monthly issue for free. I really enjoy what they put out. I've been reading it since I was about 16 years old and regular contributors to the magazine include Kendra Coxedge, Kieran Reid, Tony Johnson and Liam Napier. Um, a few of my best articles that I had to read through for this one, it was about Cam Royguard making the All Blacks, Harry Godfrey who's been an absolute standout for the Hurricanes and is going to do really well for the under 20s um, as time progresses and stuff. He's been a 
true breakout star this year. Tomosi Tavatavanawai, a true fan favorite as well. So they've got some really good articles for you guys this month. Remember to check their website out using this link over here and sign up to get a monthly membership as well. They do about 10 issues per year. I really enjoy them. So make sure you get the content going and go and visit them. At blindside flanker, I do want to have a third lock at six, so I'm going to go for Duhan van der Merwe of Scotland, who has really made his name as a power winger. What's so impressive though is the raw athleticism the guy shows while he finishes tries mid-air. He's excellent under the high ball as well, so he could definitely be a competitor come line-out time, and you can only just it takes just what one finger stroke to see 20 minute highlight reels of him just bumping off every bottom. Get him into the tight spaces of the pitch, get him to go forward and just use his power when the injury crisis hits. Now, over at open side flanker, I'm going to go for Joshua Tui Silva of Fiji. Tui Silva has been mistaken by many fans for the Fijian hooker when they've gone to meet the whole Fijian team at events and stuff like that. As Tui Silva plays on the wing for Fiji though, He's not used to being a key decision maker for the team. So over at open side flag, it would just allow him to run rampant, use that running game as if he's a Hamish Watson type, and obviously he can use that low center of gravity to get over the ball and win the turnovers. Out of any winger I can think of, he's probably the best at getting the turnovers all sorted and stuff like that. So you know what? That is probably a go. Now, finally for number eight, I'm going to pick Quinn Tupaya for the exact same reason as Joshua Tui Silva. In the All Blacks second tier, against South Africa for 2022, Quinn Tupaya quite literally turned up and played number seven for about 10 minutes or so before Tupo Va'i replaced Rico Ioane and Tupaya eventually moved to 13. That was one heck of a weird experience to see and you know what, considering this game winning turnover he'd produced against the box a year before, why not give it a go, why not prepare for a worst case scenario when you're already up on the scoreboard. Quinn Tupaya is going to be my number eight to round out this video about forwards being made up of backs. Yes, you heard that right, a forward pack made up of backs. Thank you very much for watching this video, everybody. I really appreciate it. So uh, make sure to subscribe to me down below if you enjoyed this one. A big thank you to my patrons as well. You can sign up to any of the three tiers that I've got listed over here. These are uh, my patrons as of right now. And of course, I'm over on Instagram and over on Twitter. So make sure you check me out over on those platforms. Really appreciate you guys viewing this video. Thank you very much for watching it. And I'll see you later from Max.